Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rudy McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis has said that what the indigenous peoples of Canada underwent in residential schools was equivalent to genocide. The Holy Father made this remark while speaking to a Canadian journalist on his flight back to Rome following his apostolic visit to the country from July the 24th to the 29th. The pontiff also decried how indigenous children were forcibly separated from their parents and forced to undergo a cultural, mental and racial transformation. During his apostolic voyage, the Holy Father apologised multiple times for the role the church played in the institutions. While addressing journalists during his return flight, the Holy Father also criticised all forms of colonisation. He also noted that deep down, a colonialist mentality still denigrates indigenous cultures and pushes them to modernise. The largest wildfire of the year is raging through Siskiyou County in the US state of California. Hundreds of firefighters are battling the McKinney Fire, which has already swallowed 21,000 hectares. According to the authorities, as many as 2,000 residents and trekkers on the Pacific Crest hiking trail have left the area. There is also a red flag warning in place, indicating the threat of dangerous fire conditions. On Saturday, a state of emergency was declared in the county after houses were destroyed. The drought conditions and high temperatures have intensified the spread of the blaze. Authorities have said that there could be thunderstorms that result in more fires in the coming days. The US Forest Service has warned that the conditions could become dangerous for firefighters as winds can be erratic and extremely strong. The death toll from the flood in the USA state of Kentucky has reached 28, as per the latest reports, with several people still missing. Rescue work is continuing after torrential rain caused the deadly flooding. Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear said that the number of victims was likely to rise. The governor called it one of the most devastating flooding events in state history. Due to the continuous downpour, rescue workers cannot reach various localities. Power outages also pose a big obstacle. Meanwhile, churches and communities are working hard to provide essential supplies to the victims of the flood. Various parishes in the Lexington Diocese in the state have been aiding the affected by providing food and basic facilities. Since late July, heavy rain has been pounding the state, resulting in severe flooding that has wiped away entire neighbourhoods and damaged hundreds of homes. In the African nation of Madagascar, armed bandits have killed 32 people and set homes on fire. According to a statement released by the Defence Ministry, local bandits known as Dahalo attacked the village in Ankazobe district north of the capital Antananarivo on Friday, July the 29th. Defence Minister General Richard Rakotonarina decried the attack and said it is a crime perpetrated by ruthless Dahalo who burned alive women and children. These bandits are organised criminal gangs spread across the country. There are frequent clashes between villagers and the gangs who roam the country. According to the officials, the latest attack took place as revenge against the villagers for associating with security officials. In the US Diocese of Lafayette, the 8th annual Fête Yeux de Teche boat procession will be held on Monday, August the 15th. It involves carrying the Blessed Sacrament aloft aboard a boat through the Bayou Teche waterway on the Solemnity of the Assumption. Our Lord will be accompanied by a flotilla of clergy and lay faithful. This year's procession begins at 8am local time with Mass in French, offered by Bishop Douglas Desotel at St. Leo's in Leonville. At 9am, the 40-mile Eucharistic boat procession will begin. There will be stops made along the way at Arnoville, Cecilia, Brobridge and Parks for rosary and benediction. The final stop will be at Evangeline Oak in St. Martinville. This year's procession also marks the 257th anniversary of the arrival of Acadians and the Catholic faith in the region. A year after Poland's near total ban on abortion, the number of legal terminations of pregnancies has fallen by 90%. In 2021, only 107 legal abortions were carried out in the country. In 2019, there were 1,110 abortions, and in 2020, the number stood at 1,076. 
According to a Polish national newspaper report, 75 of the 107 legal abortions in 2021 were performed after the diagnosis of birth defects in the fetus, and the rest took place because the mother's health was at risk. The abortions due to birth defects took place before the abortion ban came into effect. Before the abortion ban law, 90% of legal abortions in Poland were attributed to fetal anomalies. In October 2020, the Constitutional Tribunal Court ruled that abortions carried out after the diagnosis of a severe birth defect in the fetus are unconstitutional. The ruling came into effect in January last year. Following the reversal of Roe v. Wade, two US states have come up with bills upholding the sanctity of life from conception. The Indiana State Senate passed a bill on Saturday, July the 30th that seeks to ban abortion from the time of fertilization, except in cases of rape, incest or medical emergencies. The legislation will now be moved to the House, where it is expected to be signed by Republican Governor Eric Holcomb. Under the law, any woman who seeks an abortion in case of rape or incest does not need to report it to the police. However, they must give the doctor a written declaration. Separately, the State Senate of West Virginia also passed a bill on Friday, July the 29th, banning abortions. Governor Jim Justice had earlier said that he would sign the bill. However, it will now return to the House, where it was passed earlier this week, to discuss penalties for doctors who perform abortions. Patriarch of the Chaldean Church, his Beatitude Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco has announced his intention to step down from the patriarchal office once he turns 75. The announcement of the 74-year-old prelate has created ripples in his church, as the patriarchal office is normally held for life. Cardinal Sacco announced his intention to relinquish office in a recent interview with a Jordanian priest on Nursat TV. Although canonical provisions state that prelates have to submit their resignation when they turn 75, Oriental Church patriarchs are exempt from this rule. Cardinal Sacco said that it is a pity that in the Oriental Churches, the appropriate culture of retirement is not widespread. In a statement issued by the Chaldean Patriarchate, the top prelate said that the role of the Patriarch is one of service that does not depend on the individual person who holds it, however charismatic he is. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And remember, you can also visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.